Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Mr. Fix-It channel. Today I've got this Yamaha in the shop and it has some running issues and it's making me work for it. Stay tuned. I was sitting out there in the shed one evening not doing too much of nothing, just kind of staring at the wall. And... Alright guys, this might be a rather boring video where I just talk, but I just want to talk over some some common issues or issues that I've come up in the past and kind of how to think outside the box when you're troubleshooting performance problems or running issues or just anything in general. And it doesn't have to be on this Yamaha here. It can be, this can be translated to several different things or just about anything really that runs off of gasoline and has pistons in it. I hope you guys enjoy this video and stick around. You might learn something. If I left anything out, if you have any input or if, if you want to correct something that I'm wrong about, please leave it down in the comments. When you're working on a multi-cylinder bike with multiple carburetors, there's a lot of things that can go wrong and a lot of things that you need to check. First, you need to, you need to determine what cylinder is malfunctioning. Usually what I do is I'll just look at the spark plugs. If I see one that looks different than the rest, then I'll suspect that one cylinder or one carburetor or it'll tell you that it might be all the carburetors and all the cylinders. You want to go back to the basics at this point. You want to check your compression, uh, check your spark plug gaps. You want to make sure your carburetors are all clean and nothing is misplaced or misaligned or misadjusted in each carburetor. There's also other things that you need to check like some engines have a vacuum line that go to the petcock on the gas tank and this is operated by a pulse. It's usually one carburetor. So if I run into an issue where I'm having one cylinder running lean, I'll look to see if it's the cylinder that has the vacuum line on it and I'll check this first and make sure that this isn't leaking. Because this, this will cause one cylinder to run lean. It may still operate the vacuum diaphragm, but it may be leaking bad enough to cause a lean condition. Usually that'll show up on idle more than anything. Vacuum leaks do, just because the vacuum is, there's a lot more vacuum at idle than there is when the carburetors are wide open. Other things that you need to check is to make sure that your carburetor adjustments are all the same as far as the jets and the needle clip position. Now the idle jets, the pilot jets, they're they're all gonna be about the same. They might be a little bit different from the other, from like, you know, one might be two turns, one might be two and a quarter turns, you know, somewhere in that range. Another thing you want to look at is your air filters. Now this particular bike, the air filter box has been removed and these pod filters installed and it has a custom four to one exhaust system on it. So that's always going to change the jetting. If the exhaust pipes are too far from the same length, it can cause some issues, but usually, usually no. Usually the exhaust isn't the problem unless it's like, clogged up or you know obviously if there's you know if it's crushed if there's you know actual mechanical damage done to it other things that you need to check if it's across all four cylinders the same problem is the gas tank vent so in this particular bike the gas tank vent is in this cap and it's kind of a complicated little setup in there one-way valves and whatnot so you want to take this apart and check that that the gas tank is venting correctly because it may run right for quite a long time before it builds up enough vacuum in this tank to, you know, really show a symptom. It could be just on the verge of, of a vacuum and the, the engine may run lean at certain times. So it's a good thing to check here. If you're concerned that this might be the problem, one quick thing, one quick test you can do is just to open the fuel tank valve, the petcock, and allow fuel to flow continuously for quite some time, ideally you'd run most of the tank out just to make sure that this isn't the problem. And still if it's suspect, you should probably go ahead and just take this part and clean it make sure there's no debris in there. Another thing to check is the petcock itself on the gas tank. These vacuum petcocks have a, a diaphragm, a spring, and a rubber o-ring that makes contact to stop fuel flow. And as soon as the engine starts, the fuel flow will begin again. Um, if this isn't working correctly, you can always try the prime. A lot of these have a prime feature will it'll bypass the vacuum petcock and allow fuel to flow constantly even with the engine off. On these CV carburetors, so you, you got a couple of different carburetors basically going to see 
you're going to see a mechanical carburetor or a vacuum operated carburetor. And on these vacuum operated carburetors, there's a diaphragm under the top, under this cap here, and a spring that returns the slide. And if you I don't know how familiar you are with uh, round slide carburetors, but this is basically a round slide carburetor with a butterfly valve in it. You can get a leak in this diaphragm, whether it be a pinhole or it had come out of its groove when the last time these got installed, and that can cause a single cylinder problem. If you need to dive a little bit deeper, you know, you can pull the valve cover off, inspect a valve lash. Depending on the carburetor, there may be jets underneath this cap that could be clogged that lead into the air filters. So you need to you need to pull this apart if you're having a single cylinder carburetor problem. Pull pull the carburetor completely apart, pull the jets out. There's air passages because the carburetor needs to pull in a certain amount of air with the fuel, and I'm not talking about you know through the throat of the carburetor, I'm talking about air actually comes past the jet or just above the jet. It comes in with that fuel that's coming out of the jet to kind of help mix it and atomize it before it goes into the engine, so it's just not like raw droplets of fuel. So you have air jets in here, if you ran it without the air filter, or if your air filter had failed and sucked debris from your filter into the carburetor, especially on the CV carburetors, because there's a port that leads underneath this diaphragm and there's jets and air passageways in there. And also there's jets, air, air bleed jets in the throat of the carburetor on the inside. If those become plugged up, that's gonna cause a bad rich condition. All right, let's see what this change does to it. You ever had a project just just beat you up, kick you while you're down, and laugh in your face? Yeah, that's about where I'm at with this one. I'm take that jet out. Swap it with that jet. Put this one back together and I gotta do that to all four carburetors here. Hopefully that leads me in the right direction. Other rich condition problems you can have is a jet come unscrewed and fell into the bowl. I've seen that happen. Other over rich conditions is possibly the float in the float needle valve. You know there's o-rings and things that seal the gas coming into the carburetors. That can cause a rich condition but that's 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 pretty much other than your air filter is extremely clogged that's going to be the only thing that's going to cause an over rich condition with a carburetor. Typically it's going to be lean because the slightest little piece of sand gets into the pilot jet and that carburetor is not going to idle. Single cylinder engines it's easy to determine because it just won't run at all unless you're trying to give it gas. On multiple cylinder engines it may start up and run just fine but it won't idle great or it'll, it'll have a little hesitation coming off as you're rolling off of idle and on the idle, if, you, if you're not really tuned into what it sounds like when you have one dead cylinder out of a multi-cylinder engine, twin cylinders, you know, you can tell because it's lacking a lot of power, but when you get into four cylinders or more, one cylinder not firing just at idle, you might not notice that. So that's, that's one lean condition you can have. Another lean condition you can have is if you have a vacuum leak, like I stated earlier, but those usually only show up when it's idling or just off idle. Or if you don't have the air filters installed, that can cause a lean condition. So if you're working on it, trying to troubleshoot, you may need the air box on or the air filters on to make it run well enough to idle or to rev up cleanly. So that could be a lean condition. If there's any debris in the bottom of the carburetor, that's basically going to cause a lean condition. Uh, I've run into issues with getting water in the gas out of the out of the pump. That's kind of a weird one to troubleshoot because it runs. It's going to run like it's running out of gas, but there's plenty of gas in it. Basically, how you tell that is you get a clear clear bottle, like a pop bottle, and you want to drain the carburetor, the lowest one, usually the one on the left side with it on the side stand. Or if it's a single cylinder, just just drain the carburetor, and then look to see because gas and water won't mix together, and they'll separate rather quickly in a bottle, and you can clearly see there's water in it. Another thing that you want to look at if you're having a performance problem, and again, this is going to show up more pronounced at idle, is if you have multiple carburetors, they all need to be in sync. You can set that mechanically, you know, using a feeler gauge or a, you know, a certain size drill bit, but each cylinder is not going to be exactly perfect to the one next to it or the one across from it, and each cylinder is going to draw its own amount of vacuum 
and it's going to be just minute. It's going to be very diff the, the difference is going to be negligible. And if your carburetors are not synced together with a vacuum gauge, you can get the, the stumble off of idle and a rough idle. So you want to make sure your carburetors are all synced using a carburetor synchronizer. Uh, the one I use is vacuum. They have fluid ones. There's different ways to balance the carburetors. So you want to make sure your carburetors are properly balanced too if you're running into idle issues or off idle issues. So like I was saying, thinking outside of the box sometimes, you know, you, you get you get to the point where everything everything looks like it's good to go. But here's an example of thinking outside the box. Now there's four carburetors here, so that means there's four pilot jets. And I was having an issue where only one cylinder was running rich. And you pull all the jets out and you look and make sure all they're the same size. It's supposed to be a 30. That says 30 on it. That says 30 on it. Right here I have a number 35 drill bit. I was just using it to check the sizes of all these jets. So it won't go in. It goes right in, even with some extra space. So even though this jet says it's a 30, it's actually like a like a 40. So sometimes you really got to get in here and inspect and compare parts to find the actual issue because it may not be apparent. You know, just you know, you look and see, yeah, it's a 30 jet. That's a 30 jet. They're all 30 jets, but are they really 30 jets? And that's that's why if jets are questionable, just replace the jets. Because at some point, this jet either was manufactured wrong or was drilled out to a bigger size. So, yeah. Now, I know not everybody's going to have these drill bits to be able to measure a jet like that. But what you can do is you can start swapping parts from one carburetor to the other. And when you do stuff like that, just I know it's a lot of work to take the carbs off, put the carbs back on. But this is just the process. It's best if you just do one part at a time. That way you know which part it is. You know, if you swap all the parts from this carburetor and put them into this carburetor, you may know that there's something wrong with one of the parts in this carburetor, but there's a lot of parts here. To get a quick, you know, is it a carburetor? Yeah, you could swap everything from this carburetor to this carburetor, and your problem should move from here to there. And then you can kind of narrow it down from there. What is it, the pilot jet, the main jet? Try to only do one change at a time. Going back to the basics here, another thing you want to look at, if you if your fuel if you believe your fuel system is correct, all your compression and your valve lashes are all correct, then you need to start looking into electrical problems. Now electrical problems can come, you know, in different ways. Uh, you have a dirty connector where it's making contact sometimes or or the connector is getting hot and losing contact. So if you if you're having an issue where the bike runs great cold, but once it starts to warm up or get hot, it starts fading out and starts missing and running poorly. Could possibly be a, a overheating wire connector or a bad coil. The CDI box don't usually do that. They either work or they don't work. So if you have no spark whatsoever, it'll at least spark on two cylinders if it's a coil, usually. But before you replace a coil, you want to make sure you check the wires coming from the CDI box and make sure nothing's in between, like in a connector somewhere something's not unplugged you kind of when you start getting into electrical you got to kind of start thinking more broadly even if your ignition switch you know may be questionable like sometimes you've got to wiggle the key to get the lights to come on and stuff I would definitely replace that but other things like your spark plug leads if it's an old bike you could have a worn spot and a spark plug wire and it's uh, shorting out against the engine and a lot of these Japanese motorcycles will use the style of a spark plug boot. This spark plug boot actually just threads on to the spark plug wire. And sometimes this wire can be frayed and damaged to the point here from someone taking this on and off so many times that it's actually not making contact. There's a little screw inside there. This would be a single cylinder problem. So you want to check and make sure that that's not the case. And along with that, this spark plug boot has a resistive element in it and there's a spec on how many ohms that this spark plug boot should have and if it exceeds that it should be replaced. The reason why we put resistors in the spark plug wires is to drown out some electromagnetic interference which usually isn't a big deal on a carbureted bike. Back in the, the early 90s or late 80s when this bike was made 
CB radios were still pretty common, and if you got if you pulled up too close to a bike like this and didn't have resistive elements in it, it could cause static on your CB or on your AM radio. So sometimes they also resistor the spark plug. And when it comes to, to troubleshooting spark plugs, they're cheap enough. If it's questionable, just replace it. If you see any cracks in it or physical damage, definitely replace it. It needs to be the proper heat range of spark plug. You could be chasing what you think is a lean condition because the spark plug's so clean, but it could just be that it has the wrong heat range spark plug in it and it's just cooking everything off of the spark plug and you're not getting an accurate reading. So make sure you consult your manual if it's a factory bike. If it's been modified, then you may have to modify the spark plugs. You may have to go colder or a little bit hotter. If it's if the you feel the jetting's good and the bike runs pretty good, but the spark plugs keep fouling out, it could be you need to just put a hotter plug in. The gap is pretty much depending on how much voltage that the ignition system puts out. Depending on how much pressure there is, you need more voltage to strike an arc across an air gap. And when you put the spark inside the cylinder, the pressures, especially while the engine's running and making combustion, are, are pretty high. And the ignition system's got to be able to overcome that, that pressure. So if you, even though you're getting spark out here, you may not be getting enough spark in there under all that pressure and with that fuel mixed in. So you definitely want to get a spark tester. And usually in a lot of manuals you look at, they'll give a, a specific distance in millimeters, how far the spark should jump in, in normal atmosphere. And if it, can, if it can make that jump or better, then it should be good you know, in the cylinder. But if it won't, then, then you definitely have either a, a faulty boot or a, a coil that's going bad or it, it could be an issue with the secondary ignition system. If there's no spark at all, like I said, on all four cylinders, it might be the CDI box, but definitely check all the wiring going to it, your, your, your positives, your negatives. Make sure that you're getting a trigger from, you're always going to have either a contact point in your older bikes, they stopped doing that in the 70s. Uh, most bikes today are, are uh, magnetic pickup coils and it senses a, a strip on the crankshaft and that senses a signal to the CDI box. Now, going back to if you only have two spark plugs firing the other two, you definitely want to check the system in the pulser. It, that's, the, that's what tells the CDI box when to fire the ignition. So there's going to be ohm specifications that you can look up in the manual and you can test that wiring using a multimeter to check to see and you can also do some tests while you're cranking the engine to actually see the pulse every time it passes that flag on the crankshaft. So if you have all that and you're still missing spark on, on all four or two, then suspect the engine control unit or on Japanese bikes they call it the igniter. That would be your CDI box, your capacitive discharge ignition unit. All the four cylinders that I've worked on in the Japanese bike world, they always have two coils. You won't see four, you'll just see two. Now on the more modern bikes, I work on the old stuff, but on more modern bikes you'll see a lot of coil over plug designs. But all these early Japanese bikes, the four cylinders have two coils. And one coil will fire one and four, and the other coil will fire two and three. Because of how a four cylinders is designed, you have four cylinders, these are two outer ones, and then you have two in the middle. These two outer ones move together and the two inner ones move together and they alternate like this, if that makes sense. And you always have a waste spark. So every time number one comes up on a compression stroke, the number four is coming up on an exhaust stroke in between the exhaust and the intake stroke and you always have a spark on that stroke. So always two sparks for every four cycles. So if you have something like weak spark on one and four, then I would suspect the ignition coil. If it's just one cylinder, I would I would look at the actual wire, the boot, and the spark plug. And this is this is again, this is assuming that the cylinders are all fine and sealed, like after doing a compression test. Okay, making improvements with this bike, I determined that a couple of the intake boots from carburetor to head, they're leaking intermittently. As I mean, like, I would take the carburetors off, do a jet change, put the carburetor back on, and it may run better or it may just run completely different. And I found that out by having the engine idling and wiggling on the carburetor since there's no 
air box, the carburetors will move a little bit, and that was causing some issues. So like when hit a bump or something, the carburetor would, anyway, Keep in mind, always go back and recheck things, even though you think they're fine, go back and recheck for vacuum leaks. You know, if things just aren't making sense. So when I get a bike that has a running issue, the first thing I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to start the bike up and I'm going to rev the engine, let it warm up. Um, if the bike runs good enough to take it for a ride, I'm going to go ahead and take it for a ride, gain more information there. If it won't run good enough to go for a ride, I'm going to start my basic checks. Are all the spark plug wires on? Are they tight? Can you pull the wire out of the boot? Is the boot tight on the plug? I'll go through those checks. I may start it up and see if that changed anything because sometimes just touching something might change something. And you don't want to do too much before you fix it because you're going to accidentally fix it and you don't know what was wrong with it and it could come back. So if, it's, if, if it passes a visual inspection, like it's obviously not leaking any fuel or the intakes are obviously not cracked or starting to deteriorate and it's, it's not something that's actual visual, um, I may take a fuel sample just to see if there's water in the gas. It's usually the last thing on my mind, but here lately it seems like there's been a lot more water in the gas. That's when you come to the when I come to the point where I'm going to, through experience, try to determine just by the way it runs, if it's fuel related, if it's mechanically related, or if it's electronically related. And I'll try to kind of narrow it down using my ear and just, just past experience. If I come to conclusion that it's fuel related, which it usually is fuel related, by the way, I will look at the spark plugs and if I see a difference in the spark plugs I'll start heading towards and that that'll be my that'll be the path I take into troubleshooting this. And then sometimes you gotta think outside the box. Like if you've gone through everything, the carburetors are perfect, the cylinders all have the same compression, your valve lash is good, all your spark plugs have are new or have been replaced. You've owned out all your spark plug boots and tested everything and you feel like you have got good spark. You want to start thinking outside the box. I'll take a brake cleaner, which usually works good. You just got to be careful with it because it's very flammable. Because if you don't get the flammable kind, then this trick doesn't really work. But you'll you'll spray the intake and see if you hear the engine change. Or I'm in, on an air cooled engine like this, I'll spray the head gasket because there's no water jacket in the way. I can spray I can directly on the head gasket and see if there's a change. Like if it's a bike that's got a lot of miles on it, I'll definitely check the throttle shafts. And in this case. There's two seals in each one of these carburetors that could possibly be leaking vacuum. So I'll, I'll spray that. I'll spray around the carburetor bowl, which usually those don't show. The carburetor bowl gasket leaks don't show up until high speed. You'll get a high speed fuel starvation, is what they like to call it, where it'll start leaning out in the higher RPMs. But I'll spray there and I'll just, I'll just kind of spritz it around. I'm not going to hose this thing down because it's running and there's spark. I'll just spritz and wait and listen. Uh, if you have your Welch plugs removed on your pilot screws, uh, I'll spritz a little bit down in those holes because sometimes that O-ring will fail and start drawing in extra air from the pilot screw itself. If it has an enrichening system, um, those, those enrichener plungers can wear and allow air to pass through and cause a lean condition. There's no way to really test that on this particular carburetor. Some of them, the the enrichener port is out here at the where the air filter attaches, and you can kind of spray that a little bit and try to get an idea that way, or block it with block it with your finger or something. But you got to start thinking. You got to start thinking outside of the box sometimes. Like, is the choke is the choke not returning all the way? Is the cable binding up? Look down in here, make sure the choke is actually closing. The mechanism that operates the choke, is this working correctly? And I also determined that the gas tank vent in this cap is intermittently not venting correctly and it's slowing or completely stopping the fuel flow to the carburetors. Every time I would check fuel flow, it was fine. I found this out by I was riding it and it, the bike just completely died out like it ran out of gas. So I had this side panel off over here so I can clearly see that clear filter underneath there. And I turned it on prime. I watched the fuel filter and no fuel would flow. I'm like, okay. So I grabbed the key, unlocked the cap, and as soon as I unlocked it, fuel started flowing. This is an intermittent, and intermittent problems are the hardest problems to solve because they 
like I said, again, it's got to be malfunctioning for you to find the malfunction. If everything's working, I mean, other than a wiggle test, you start, start wiggling wires. Definitely, if I grab that right there and I start wiggling that, and the bike starts running good and bad and good and bad, there's definitely something wrong with that connector. So you can definitely do a wiggle test if you, you know, this might even be something you do in your preliminary troubleshooting, especially if you have the gas tank off of it like this. A lot of times when I work on a bike and I'm having some, some pretty bad issues and I got to have the gas tank off of it and have the engine running, I'll have a setup like this. It's just a, a bottle with a valve on it. I can hook this up to the carburetors and it'll run off this and I can wiggle wires and do whatever I need to do with all with the seat and the gas tank everything all disconnected but you got to keep in mind if you have a vacuum line you got to plug that because that normally goes to the gas tank another thing in thinking outside the box is i had an issue one time so some carburetors will have hoses dangling off of them that go to vent tubes because the carburetor has the vent atmosphere so the gas can go in and out of them sometimes they have tubes the tubes were hanging outside the frame just dangling out here and I was getting a, a lean condition on one carburetor and it took me a while to figure it out that because those tubes was hanging outside and the wind was hitting them, it was actually causing air to rush into the carburetor and cause an overly lean condition in one carburetor. That took me a while to figure out. So you really want to look outside the box sometimes if you've gone through all the basics. Another thing is if the brakes are faulty, you know, sometimes a caliper can stick. It might roll around just fine when you're pushing it, but you go out there and you ride it and you get on the brake hard one time and it seems like the power's kind of gone after that, but you don't realize that's what happened, you know, you hit the brake. It could be a brake is dragging. So more on electrical problems. I did I did have this issue for a long time. It took me a long time to figure this out. The bike continuously got to the point to where it would start up cold perfect every time, but after I'd ride it a while, I'd shut it off. It wouldn't restart right away. I'd have to wait sometimes 10, 15 minutes or longer to get the bike to restart. I, I had gone through all the tests. I had checked the wiring. I did voltage drops, all kinds of tests to this wiring and could not find a problem. And it was on a crotch rocket and you gotta take a bunch of stuff apart to get to the spark plugs. Whereas like on this bike, you can get to the spark plugs pretty easy or right out here in the open, but on that on that Kawasaki Ninja, you had to take the gas tank and everything off. I felt like I was losing spark. I felt It felt like an electrical problem. I would run it here in the shop and I would get it hot and I would get it to the point where it wouldn't start and I'd hurry up, pull the gas tank and everything off and check for spark at the spark plugs and I always had spark, always had good spark. This this issue went on for, for quite a while and it got to the point to where I would just be riding it and it would just fade out. It would just sputter out and die, it wouldn't start back up. But after cooling off, it would start back up. and you would think, well, that's well, that's a coil, that's coil, or that's you know, that that's something that's that's getting hot and going bad. You know, well, I've swapped out coils, I swapped out CDI boxes. I just couldn't figure out this problem for the longest time. And what it was, the wires that feed 12 volt source to the coils, they were just on the verge of being burnt out. So what was happening is, is by the time I got the gas tank and everything off of the bike to get to the spark plugs to check for spark. The, the wires had cooled off enough to where it was sparking again and I finally just come to the conclusion that I needed to run hot wires directly from the battery to the positive side of the ignition coil and that solved all my problems and I, that's when I finally knew that a voltage drop was happening between the fuse box and the coils so to fix that problem, what I did is I took those I took those power wires that normally power the coils and I used them to power relays and I run a whole nother circuit off of the load side of those relays so those coils and that fixed that problem forever. The bike always started every time I wanted it to. And don't be afraid to park this thing off to the side and take a day and sleep on it. Don't let yourself get frustrated. When you when frustration leads to mistakes. Sometimes problems can just carry on and carry on you just you can't figure it out and you go through everything and you're scratching your head but if you if you're just persistent and you just keep on it and, and you you keep learning like whenever i have a question I, i'm usually the answer guy like people call me to get answers all the time i run into problems working on my own stuff where i just don't have the answers and that's where i turn to youtube that's why i like making videos like this i turn to youtube or i'll go to the the internet forums and i'll i, I read and research and people that's modified things and they'll 
post up stories and I'll read and that's where I gain a lot of my knowledge. Don't ever assume that you know everything. Even if you rebuilt these carburetors yourself and you, you're having a running issue, it may be you. You may have done something wrong. So don't think twice about going back in and be like, well, maybe I didn't install that part correctly and just go in and check because it may save you a bunch of time, especially if the problem changed to a different problem after you'd worked on something. Like it was running like this before, you took it apart, now it's running like this. Definitely go back in and check your own work. Don't don't have don't let your ego don't let your ego get in the way. Check your work. Make sure everything's right. Read and research. I do videos like these for you guys because this is how I learn. I've learned by watching other people's work and gaining as much knowledge as I can. You got to watch because some people some people might have good intentions and think they know what they're talking about, but they don't really know what they're talking about, and that's the one of the biggest problems I have with people is, especially men, you guys, they're afraid to say, I don't know. And they'll just come up with anything off the top of their head that sounds legitimate, that they believe to be true, and it may not be true. Sometimes you got to get second and third opinions. <laughs> I'm, I've been wrong many, many times, and that's, that's how you, you progress as a, as a human, is by being wrong, acknowledging you were wrong, and finding the rights for those wrongs. And when you see results, that's when you know you're on the right track. The point I'm trying to make here is there was multiple issues going on all at the same time and they were showing up at different times and causing different problems. And this kind of thing will definitely send you on a wild goose chase and you just gotta go back to the basics, start over fresh, cause you never know what's really going on, especially with an older bike like this. It does have 20 some thousand miles on it. So it's been ridden, and... Alright guys, I know I was very long-winded, and that was probably really boring. I was just trying to bounce some new ideas off here, trying to give you some new angles on how to think of things and troubleshooting aspect of things. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, and don't be afraid to fix it. Thanks for watching.